Hello everybody, this is Prairie Vanguard. Today we will be discussing some basic concepts of socialism. This is a short video and should function only as a very basic introduction to socialism. Before we begin, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to this channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Let's jump right into it. What is socialism? A short definition may be a transition period between capitalism and communism chiefly characterized by the public ownership of the means of production. To understand this definition, we must first define a few key terms and be introduced to some basic concepts. Allow me to break down this definition into two smaller, more manageable sections. 1. A transition period between capitalism and communism. The worldview of Marxists is known as dialectical materialism. We understand the world as a constantly changing collection of systems which influence each other. We also understand that the real, material world is reality. Human thought and knowledge is only a reflection of the material world and the evolving systems within it. It does not come from a divine source or occur spontaneously. When applying dialectical materialism to the study of history and societies, one arrives at historical materialism. History is not created by individuals and their ideas, but rather by the material conditions of societies. The ideas of individuals can and do lead to change, but they are motivated by the environment they are in and the level of development their society has achieved. One of the defining features of a society is their economic system. These economic systems are largely influenced by the dominant modes of production and use. The general path of development is as follows. Primitive communism, slave society, feudalism, capitalism, socialism, and finally, communism. Although it is important to understand that this path is not necessarily linear nor universal. What is the driving force behind the development of these economic systems? Advancements in the means of production, that is, changes in technology that improves the efficiency of producing material goods, and changes in the organization of labor through time. In primitive communism, humans needed to hunt animals and gather food from wild plants, as agriculture had not yet been invented. Finding enough food to survive was a challenge, so everyone had to rely on each other if they did not want to starve. This necessitated cooperation and sharing of resources between all individuals in these small, scattered groups. When humans discovered agriculture, the surplus of food that was produced allowed for large populations to be sustained and the specialization of work. Private property developed in this stage. Those who owned herds of animals and the land to produce food could control and exploit those who did not own property. With advancements in technology, like metal tools, pottery, etc., enslaved people produced enough for their owners to provide their slaves with food and shelter while taking the surplus for themselves. Thus, slave society became dominant. Feudalism arose after the collapse of European slave societies. The nobility was given land by the crown in exchange for their loyalty and military service. The people who lived on and worked the land were called serfs. While serfs were not slaves, they were unable to leave the land of their lord, generally could be bought and sold along with land, and were required to provide all they produced to their lord, except for the little food grown in a small field for their subsistence. This system was justified by the nobility by providing military protection for the serfs. Free townspeople could use their hand tools to engage in crafts, producing furniture, clothing, candles, etc., and organize themselves into guilds to maintain stable prices. Merchants created their own guilds with the aim of dominating local markets. Capitalism developed during the Industrial Revolution. Steam engines and factory machinery allowed for the mass production of goods. The efficiency of these machines bankrupted the craftsmen. Unlike with the hand tools of previous eras, significant upfront investment was necessary to acquire these new machines. Wealth concentrated in the hands of those few who owned the machines, the means of production. These machines were the private property of capitalists. Those who did not own the means of production were required to sell their labor for wages in order to survive. Another important advancement of capitalism was the socialization of labor. Rather than an individual craftsman learning a skill and then creating their own products from beginning to end, many workers would now work together in a factory to produce products. A simple example of this is the assembly line system. This class of workers who sell their labor in exchange for wages is known as the proletariat. Let's take a moment here to draw our attention to something that is very important. Capitalism is not human nature. It has not always been how society organized itself. It is simply one system of production that arose quite recently in human history. Capitalism is destroying our environment, creates immense suffering, especially in those areas of the world whose resources are being exported to the major industrial nations, and creates a contradiction. Labor is socialized, but the profit from that which labor creates is concentrated in the hands of a small elite class of capitalists. Eventually, this contradiction will resolve itself through the adoption of socialist production. 
we have now traced the development of society from primitive communism through slave society, feudalism, and capitalism. Socialism is a transition between capitalism and communism. For us to understand socialism, we first need to define communism. Communism is a stateless, classless, and moneyless society. In a communist society, everyone works to the best of their ability and receives all that they need for free. What does it mean for society to be stateless? This means that there will be no states, or countries, controlling the people through military violence and dividing the people of the world. What about classes? This means that there will be no classes, no division of people based on their relation to production, where one suppresses another. What about moneyless? In global communism, there will be an abundance of material goods. Everyone will work to the best of their ability and, as there is no scarcity, will be able to receive all that they need without needing to pay for it. Obviously, we are a long way away from communism. That is why we have socialism to function as the transition between capitalism and communism. What is the defining feature of socialism? We can now move on to the second part of our definition from earlier. 2. Chiefly characterized by the public ownership of the means of production. In socialism, the workers themselves own the means of production. The workers own the factory machinery, the land to produce food, the transportation infrastructure, the electric grid, etc. Rather than each of these being held in private ownership by large corporations led by an incredibly wealthy CEO and their shareholders, the workers who make all the parts move, create the wealth, and create the products hold direct ownership of them collectively. This can either be accomplished by cooperative ownership, where groups of workers own the specific factory they work at or farm they produce on, or by state ownership, if the state is organized as a dictatorship of the proletariat. These two systems, cooperative and state ownership, can also be used in combination. Many people may be turned off by the term dictatorship of the proletariat. Let us define this scary-sounding term. The dictatorship of the proletariat is not a dictatorship in the colloquial use, that is, an all-powerful government that intimidates and coerces the population to control its every movement. Far from it. From a Marxist perspective, if you live in a capitalist nation, you live in a dictatorship of the bourgeoisie, that is, a dictatorship of the capitalist class. In capitalist nations, the capitalist class holds political power. Take, for example, corporate campaign contributions and lobbying efforts in America. It uses this power to suppress the working class, the proletariat. It is a dictatorship because the power of the state is controlled by one class, and this power is used to suppress another class. In a socialist nation, the working people hold political power and use the power of the state to suppress the capitalist class, which will fight hard to overthrow any government serving the interest of the working people. This video is intended only to serve as a very basic introduction to socialism. I will continue making more videos on socialist topics, including more in-depth videos on specific topics mentioned in this video. If any of the things I said interested you, I would recommend you look in the description where I have linked a number of free books, audiobooks, and other videos you can use to learn more about socialism. Please comment below if you have any questions, give this video a like, and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. Workers of the world, unite.